On April 23, 2018, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein argued a sentencing case at the Supreme Court. While typically the Solicitor General's job, it's not unprecedented for top DOJ brass to pull rank and take a turn appearing before the High Court. But it came with a price. For the occasion, Rosenstein was required to don the mourning dress, an anachronistic formal attire consisting of a frock coat with tails, striped pants, and a vest. All men who argue on behalf of the federal government at the High Court must wear it. He looked more like the father of the bride than a lawyer. The legal profession has its fair share of quirky fashion traditions. There's the inaugural skull cap, once a favorite of justices attending a presidential swearing in. British lawyers, sorry, barristers, still famously wear wigs during criminal trials. And who can forget RBG's signature lace collars? But for most lawyers, their fashion choices are a bit more conventional. Wear a suit to court and to visit clients. Business casual, emphasis on business in the office. Of course, that doesn't mean there isn't room for a little bit of personal flair. And in an industry that claims to want increased diversity, not to mention emerging from two years of working from home, is it time to rethink how lawyers should look? Lawyers have long worn some distinctive clothing. Stanford law professor Richard Thompson Ford wrote a book about fashion and law. He says you can trace the origins of lawyer dress code back to medieval times. In the uh, Middle Ages, they, along with judges, often wore robes and therefore represented their grounding in a revered and ancient profession. But in 18th century Europe, Elite professionals, including lawyers, started to reject the flowery adornments of medieval dress in favor of a more practical attire. It evolved into a symbol of the Enlightenment, in a sense. Practicality, sobriety, industriousness, um, which were all new values at that time for elites. Today, American lawyers don't wear wigs. Take that, British imperialists. But they've continued to embrace the look of the elite class. In fact, the term white shoe, used to describe many prestigious law firms, comes from the style of shoe worn on 1950s Ivy League campuses, whose students eventually filled the industry's ranks. But the days of the Brooks Brothers clad lawyer, while not over, are evolving. There's regional differences. So I would say lawyers in California are, as a rule, much more casual than lawyers in New York. Then there's this. Big law doesn't exactly look the way it did in the 1950s. Yes, so for hundreds of years, the legal profession was a boys club. As the profession has become more diverse, the standards for professional dress have had to change. The most controversial topics I wrote about was probably under the broad umbrella of women. In particular, somewhat to my surprise, it was fashion. Vivia Chen is a Bloomberg Law columnist who has tackled the thorny issue of big law fashion. What was it in fashion that really provoked women in discussion? I would say two things. Things that touched on sex appeal, and the second thing would be aging. At the end of the day, does it really matter what a lawyer looks like? Some firms think so. On one end of the spectrum is Jones Day, which is famously buttoned up. A Jones Day manager once sent a scathing letter reminding staff that clothes meant for the beach, exercise sessions, nightclubs, and shopping malls should not be worn to work. On the other end of the spectrum, Quinn Emanuel just wants you to be comfortable. Like, really comfortable. Now we are at a point where people do feel they can be much more real in their appearance, that they don't have to subscribe to, you know, the so-called, you know, white Brooks Brothers sensibility. When someone comes to work wearing clothing that they feel psychologically comfortable in, it matters a great deal. It's something that we should think about in terms of its implications for uh, the inclusiveness of the profession and for uh, social mobility and equality generally.